Hi guys, welcome back and we are continuing with learning example 4a from um, learning module 4 which is recording credit and sundry transactions. Uh, I just want to apologize for the first um, for the first video I did on this chapter. I see that it created two files instead of one. This is a new um, camera I purchased so I'm still working out the kicks so sorry about that. Hopefully I've sorted it out and this lesson will be in one, only one movie. So let's continue and we are on the 10th, let me get my pen. Alright and it says, you purchased a MTN recharge voucher of 800 Rand for the pay as you go cell phone from Petty Cash. Okay, so first of all let's go back to our T accounts as we always do. So first of all, we purchased it out of petty cash. It's an asset plus minus. So money went out, so that'll be that input, which is an asset plus minus. And then what did we purchase? We purchased a recharge voucher, so that'll fall under, just want to confirm, under the telephone, they put that under the telephone account, which is an equity minus plus. All right, so then it's 800, so our petty cash gets credited with 800. The VAT exclusive amount, which will be your telephone expense will be 701.75 that will be 800 divided by 1.14 and then your VAT amount is 98.25 okay so let's just complete that into our register our document number is PV9 so let's just write that in PV9 the date is the 10th Details is, remember petty cash, we write down what we purchased. That will be the NTM recharge voucher. Then petty cash is 800. VAT input, 98.25. And then in the sundry accounts, there's nothing there for telephone. So that will be the amount of 701.75. And then telephone is your other account. Oh yeah, that was easy enough. Let's carry on. Yeah, let me just keep marking. And that. I always have to mark it because yeah, they want to get confused, like I said before. Alright, great stuff. Okay, cash sales according to cash register roll 15,000, okay, 1526.58, 15,236 um, rand and 58 cents. So let's do the account again. Since it's a cash register roll, we know that it's bank. It's an asset plus minus. Our other leg is it was for sales is an equity minus plus and then money came in so it's that output which is a liability minus plus okay so the amount 1523658 it's money we got in your bank increased so yeah that will go into your cash book receipts so it's 1523658 did I get it? Yeah, I got it right. Then your sales amount, which would be your income, your credit, will be uh, 13365.42. Yeah, I'm just going to work off my notes. It will be easier for me then to calculate each and every transaction individually just to save time. And then the VAT amount will be that amount. Your bank amount minus your sales amount, that gives you your VAT output on the credit side, which will be 
187.1.16. Okay, so let's complete that into the books quickly. So bank increased on the debit side, so that'll be your cash book receipts. So let's quickly complete that. So it's your cash register roll. The date is the 10th. Cash sales. Your analysis of receipts is one three. Ah, oh, sorry. One five two three six. One five two three six point five eight. Your VAT output. One eight seven one point one six, and then your sales is the VAT exclusive amount one three three six five. Point four two, but as we know with the sales we need to um, calculate the cost and the trading inventory so once again now we go back to our magic blocks and where have I got space for magic blocks let's just draw that one over here so that'll be your cost price profit selling price we use markup percentage so cost price 100, profit 50%, selling price 150. Okay, so now we use the VAT exclusive amount, will be 13365.42. So 13365.42 divided by 150, multiplied by 100, that gives you 8910. 8910.28 Okay, so that will go into obviously you've got your trading inventory which is an asset plus minus and your cost of sales your trading inventory decreased with 8910.25 cost of sales 89 uh, 8910.25 is it 25 sorry to eight, sorry, to eight, to eight. Okay, so let's complete that now in the register under the cost of sales trading inventory column. So that'll be eight. Oh, sorry, where am I now? Eight one eight seven. Yeah. No. Eight nine one zero point two eight. Yes. Eight nine one zero point two eight. Okay, sorry about that. I lost my space here a little bit. So let me just highlight that. We've done that. We've done that one. And we've done that one. Awesomeness. All right. And we've done that one. Okay. Oh, great stuff. Okay, what's next? Okay, the owner, the owner took a table and chair from stock for his own use. These goods would have been sold for 750 rand, including that, had it been sold to the public. Okay, so one thing we realize, number one, is this is drawings, but when you look at this, Remember, when the owner takes something, he doesn't take it at the selling price because, let's face it, this guy is the owner. So he's going to take it out of cost price. So, so we need just to calculate the cost price of it to be able to do this transaction in the book. So let's, do, let's calculate the cost price thereof quickly. Right. Because, let's face it, you're the owner. You're not going to take it at selling price. It's cost price. As long as you put it in drawings and you reverse the VAT that you paid for that purchase, everything is fine. So let's quickly do that. So first of all, since he's taking something, that'll be drawings. It's an equity minus plus. Other one, I think it's furniture. Wait, it would have been sold, sorry, so it's trading inventory. And then that uh, output. Am I right? Yeah, that output. 
Okay, but now first of all, now we need to calculate the cost price, uh, the cost price thereof. So, uh, sorry, I just need to get my notes here again. So it's cost price, profit, selling price, markup percentage. But first of all, they said it was 750, including VAT. So we need to calculate it, VAT exclusive. So that'll be 750 divided by 1.14. That gives you 657.89. So there we go, 657.89. Oh, sorry, wrong side. 657.89. So 150, 150. So 657.89 divided by 150 multiplied by 100 gives you 43860 and 43860 but now we need to remember sorry trading inventory asset plus minus that output that output liability minus plus okay now but now we need to remember this is the vat exclusive amount and as we know the vat exclusive amount Drawings is your main account, which is your VAT inclusive amount. So we can put the VAT um, exclusive amount in your trading inventory because that's where it belongs. And now we calculate the VAT on that amount. It's 438.6 times 14%. That equals 61.40, which is your VAT output, 61.40. So your VAT inclusive amount will be 43860 plus 6150 and that gives you 500. Remember, drawings is always a debit, capital always a credit, so don't forget that. Okay, so now we need to go and complete this in our books. And as we can see, okay, it's drawings, trade inventory, VAT, doesn't fall under bank, debtors, creditors, petty cash. So then it falls under your general journal because it doesn't fall under any of those other categories. So let's quickly complete this then. So this will be JV3. The date is the 11th. And once again, remember what I said, it's a good practice to do your debits first and then your credits. So drawings. 500. Trading inventory is a credit, and that'll be 438, 43860, and then VAT output, 6140. And obviously your credits must be equal to your debits, so that's done. So, and a little description. Owner took goods for personal use. And you take the ruler and just. Uh, okay, I got the. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. So let's just mark that. Okay, so remember when the owner takes stock, he takes the stock at cost price. He does not take it at selling price. All right, and let me, okay. I seem to have lost one of my pins now. Um, it's okay, it's okay. Ah, here it is. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, let's just mark that one. I'll mark that one. And we will mark that one okay and that okay so let's do the next one it said okay give me a sec <clears throat> okay sold merchandise on credit to isofenta 
for 29070 less 7.5% trade discount. Sold merchandise on credit. All right, so let's do our T accounts. So that'll be your debtors control, which is an asset plus minus. Then we have our trading in our no, no. sales. It's an equity minus plus, and then money came in. So that'll be VAT output. Liability minus plus. Okay. So that says it's 29070 less 7.5% uh, trade discount. Okay. So yesterday I was thinking a little bit of a better way to calculate to calculate things when you when you've got to deal with discounts that um, that you give somebody discount or stuff like that. So I came up with another magic block to make it a little bit easier. So let's see. So this magic block is going to work on, okay, I'm just going to bend over here. You have your actual selling price, your discount amount, and then you have your discounted selling price. Now, the difference between this magic block and the other magic block is this one is VAT inclusive. Okay, so let's quickly see. Okay, so let me just, I just quickly want to read, uh, read through this again. Okay, so this will be the actual selling price is 292070. Am I right? And the actual selling price is a hundred percent. Okay, then they say we got, sorry, then they say we got 7.5% discount. So the discount percentage is 7.5. So that means we only paid, it's a hundred minus 7.5. And that gives you 92.5. Okay, so now, so remember this now is VAT inclusive. You have your actual selling price, your discount percentage or your discount amount, and then your discounted selling price. So the actual selling price is 100% minus the discount amount is 7.5%. And that 100 minus 7.5 gives you 92.5. So we are looking for the discounted selling price. So now this thing works exactly like the previous like the previous magic block but just remember this one you do VAT inclusive and to do your calculation so that'll be 29070 divided by 100 multiplied by 92.5 and that gives you Two six eight eight nine point seven five. Two six eight eight nine point seven five. So to calculate the discount amount will be the actual selling price minus the discounted selling price, or you can just use the magic block formula again, which will be two nine oh seven oh divided by one hundred multiplied by seven point five, and that will give you the amount. But for this exercise now, I just need the discounted selling price. Okay. So then, uh, let me see. Oh, once again, getting my papers mixed up here. So my debtors control now increases with 2688.75. My sales increased with the VAT exclusive amount, which would be 2358750. And then my VAT amount will be that one minus that one. And that gives you 3302.25. Oh, 
Okay, so let's put that one in our books. So as we can see, our debtors control increased. So as we can see from the formula, if your debtors increase, it goes into your debtors, your debtors journal. So let's quickly do, do that. Um, debtors journal, where's my debtor? Ah, here we go. So that then will be D2, the 11th, it is Isofenta, Debtors Control 26889.75, VAT Output 3302.25, and your sales is 2358750. But we are not done yet because we still need to calculate the cost of sales. Am I right? Yes, I know we are. Okay, now where is my. So I'm just gonna watch this part off. Okay. <coughs> plus minus and then cost of sales equity minus plus all right now remember what we said previously about when you calculate the cost price on an item that you've given a discount to is remember you did not get the discount when you purchase the items you are just giving a discount to a customer so you need to calculate the price Bef the cost price before the discount. All right. So in other words, we sold the we sold the merchandise on 29070 less the 7.5 percent. So in other words, we need to work on the 29070 amount to calculate the cost price. Okay. But remember, magic block. So let's go to the magic block. It's your cost price. Sell. Ah, yeah. sorry. What am I doing? Profit, selling price. And this is your markup percentage, not gross margin. Okay, so that'll be 29070 divided by 1.14. That's 25500. Okay, so 150, 150. So the selling price. That exclusive selling price, 25500. So 25500 divided by 150 multiplied by 100 equals 17,000. So our cost price there then is 17,000. And let's complete that there 17,000. All right. I hope everybody's with us so far. So let me highlight there, let me highlight there, and highlight there, highlight there, and highlight there. Great stuff. I think we're doing extremely well today. I wish I could answer, I wish I could ask, are there any questions? But yeah, that would quite not help. All right. So let me wipe here quickly. Okay, let's have a look, see where are we next. Let's look. All right, the next one. No. Sorry, let's get my paper sorted out quickly. Oh, I'm back. <clears throat> okay, issued a receipt RCO2 to runway dealers for 3500 in full settlement of their account. A prompt settlement discount was allowed and JV4 was completed. All right. So let's read it again. Issued received RCO2 to runway dealers for 3,500 Rand in full settlement of their account. A prompt settlement discount was allowed and JV4 was completed. Okay. So let's have a look at what we're doing now. 
So we've got debtors. It's an asset plus minus. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong one again. Debtors. Then they paid cash. So the other leg will be bank. Asset plus minus. And, okay, I actually did this the wrong way around now. Sorry about that, guys. Because first of all, remember, you put your, it's just easier to put your main account first. So bank, debtors, bank, uh, bank debtors, and as you, as you should know, when, uh, because the VAT of the transaction was calculated at the beginning um, of the sale, when they pay back, VAT is not calculated, so there will therefore be no, no VAT payable. But first of all, they, do, they say 3,500 Rand uh, was paid. So let's say, so your bank increased with 3,500 and your debt is decreased with 3,000. 500. So let's quickly put that in the books. So that'll be your bank increase. That'll be cash book, cash book receipts. That's runaway dealers. So that'll be RCO2, the 11th runaway dealers. Okay, analysis of receipts 3,500. Debtors control 3,000. 500. Okay, but now the transaction does not stop there because we gave them a discount, a prompt settlement discount. They paid earlier. That's money they would have paid. So on our books, there will be an amount outstanding because if they owe, let's say for instance, 6,000 rand, they pay 3,000, but we give them 3,000 discount. And we do not um, calculate that in our transactions. We don't calculate it. We don't add that information into our journals. It means we, our books are going to show that they still owe us 3,000 Rand. So now we need to calculate how much discount did we actually give them. And then we need to work that into our journals just to be able to complete this transaction. So let's quickly look at that. Okay. So we are busy with runway dealers. Okay, let's see. No. Okay, now runway dealers paid. So let's say debtors. So they owed, so they did a transaction for 4560. Then they brought stuff back in the debtors allowance journal for 912. Okay, so that's 4560 minus 912 give you 3648. They paid in, as we can see, runway dealers, the transaction we did, just did. They paid in 3,500. So in other words, 148 Rand was, so we gave them 148 Rand discount. So let's quickly do the T accounts for that. Okay. So debtors control is an asset plus minus. The other land, what did we do or what did we get the money for? Or, or what did we pay? If I can put it like that, it's an expense. Is for discount allowed. It's a discount that we allowed. That's the other leg. That's an equity minus plus. And because it's money that we are losing in the process, um, it's an expense. And then VAT. So because we are losing money, we can claim the VAT back on that amount. And that's your VAT input. Remember VAT input is money that we claim back from SARS, which is an asset plus minus. So we've got 148 rent that we need to account for. So our debtors decrease with 148. So the discount that we allowed will be 148 divided by 1.14 and that gives you 
0.129.82 and then your VAT input will be the debtors amount minus your discount allowed amount and that will be 18.18. So let's complete this into our journals quickly. So we've got, okay, it doesn't fall anyway. See, debtors are decreasing, but it does not go into your debtors allowance journal because there are a few exceptions to the rules. And this is one of them. When you allow a discount, that goes into your general journal. So let's quickly complete that one. And it'll be JV4, the 11th. Let's see our credits. Ach, debits. Is your discount allowed? Discount allowed. Um, discount on debit. One, two, nine, eight, two. Debtors control. Oh, no. VAT input, sorry. It's one, eight, point, one, eight. And your debtors. Remember, your main accounts always, always your VAT inclusive amount. One, forty, eight. And a little explanation. Settlement, ah, settlement, discount allowed. Okay, and then let's draw the line. Great stuff. Okay, so we're done with that one. We did two there. Okay, so that one is done. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I am totally. Oh, got it. That one's done, and then cash book receipts, that one's also done. And then that one's done, and that one's done. Excellent, thank you. Let's continue. How's our time look? Oh, half an hour. We're good. We're still good. We're still good. So let's look. Number 12. Sold merchandise on credit to Lebotate for, six, uh, for 7682.95. So that seems like a pretty basic one. So let's see. So debtors control. It's an asset plus minus. Sales, equity minus plus, money came in, so it's that output, liability minus plus, and then let's just do the trading inventory, asset plus minus, and the, oh, sorry, cost of sales. So equity minus plus. All right, so how much did we buy? 7682.95. So your debtors are increasing with 7682.95. Your sales is your VAT exclusive amount is 673.43 and your VAT output will be 943.52. Okay, so now once again we do the magic block. I will do it out of, I'm just going to do it out of my head. I'm not going to draw it every time. So then that'll be 6739, 6739.43 divided by 150 multiplied by 100. And that gives you 4492.95. So trading inventory decreases with 4492.95. Point nine five, and your cost of sales four four nine two point nine five. Okay, so let's do the, let's put this in the books quickly. 
That'll be my debtors journal because my debtor, debtors are increasing. Uh, where are we at? It's D3. Date is the 12th. It's Mr. Lebo or Mrs. Lebo Tate. 7682.95. The Veramount 943 9452. And 6739 is your sale. 6739.43. And your cost of sales, 4492.95. Alright, so let's just mark all that. And then, yeah. Okay, let's wipe that. Now, now, the more you practice this stuff, the easier it becomes. Um, and the more questions, if you're unsure, ask your lecturer questions. That's why they are there. They are there to help you under understand. I remember my lecturers, I used to drive them nuts. But at least at the end of the day, I understood what I was doing. And I, well, I have to say, I passed pretty well. Passed with a 97%. Uh, my, my whole course with a 96% average. So, ask questions, believe me, it helps. Ask questions until you understand. Okay, let's see, 13. The owner took 250 rand from Petty Cash to purchase 100 postage stamps at 2, 2 rand 50 each from the SA Post Office. The owner kept 20 of these stamps for personal use and the rest were retained for business use. Okay, so this is going to be fun. Let's do this one quickly. So we've got number one, we've got Petty Cash. Which is an asset plus minus. Great. Then, what did he purchase? He bought stamps. So that's postage and stationery, which is an expense, minus plus. Then, we've got the VAT amount. Money went out, so it's VAT input, which is an asset, plus, minus. But, he also kept some stamps for himself, and that'll be your drawings. Equity minus plus. Okay, so let's start. Okay, let's start this game. First of all, he spent 250 from petty cash, and your petty cash decreases with 250. Then let's calculate the VAT amount on that 250 because let's face it, he has to pay all the VAT on that. So the VAT amount will be. Let me get my calculator. It's 250 divided by 1.14. Okay, that equals 219. Okay, I just want to write this down here. 219.30. But that's fine. So it's 219.30 minus 250 equals. So that's 30. Oh, wait, wait, I'm doing something wrong here now. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, sorry. I'm just going to redo this quickly. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Oh, it's quite easy to get confused sometimes, I know. All right, I just want to check something. So he bought a hundred stamps for two dollars fifty. Sorry, two rand fifty. So it's a hundred times two rand fifty. So that cost him two hundred and fifty rand. That's that we've got eighty of them. So eighty times two point five equals two hundred. Okay, so two hundred rand. Went for the business, so 200 divided by 1.14. That gives you 175.44. Okay, 
as 175.44. Okay, postage and stationery. Yeah. So that went 175.24, and then we've got 20 times 2.5. Okay, so 50 went for personal use, so the bad exclusive amount of the 50 equals uh, 50 divided by 1.14. So the bad exclusive amount is 43.8. Six. Four three point eight six. Okay. So yeah, sometimes you need to just sit and just figure out uh, figure out everything. Okay, two hundred and fifty. Okay, so the postage and stationery, the VAT exclusive amount is one seventy five point four four. Okay. The drawings amount the drawing amount is okay, 50. And now the VAT input will be 250 minus 175.44 minus 50. And that gives you 24.56. Okay, sorry about, oh, sorry. Sorry about that. It's 200, yeah, 250 minus that, and that gives you that. Okay. So this one is simple. First of all, we did spend the 250, the 250 rand in petty cash. Then the postage, the postage, postage and stationery will be 175.44. Drawings was the 50, um, 50 rand. No, I just want to double check something, yeah? Sorry, guys. Yeah. And then the VAT amount will be that one, minus that one, minus that one. That gives you 24.56. Okay. Yo. That was a big one. I can't believe I got confused with this one. All right, sorry about that again, guys. So let's just put this into your petty cash journal. PV10, 13. It'll be postage stamps. 250. Okay, postage and stationery is 175.44. That input, 24.56, and then 50 will be drawings. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's just mark that one. And we'll mark that one, and then that one. Okay, I think let's do about two more, maybe three. We'll just quickly have a, to see if that if we can do that. Okay, Lebo Tate returned some goods. Issued credit note eight hundred and twenty-five. Totally returned good. So let's do our T accounts again. Okay, Lebo Tate, uh, yeah, debtors control, asset plus minus, debtors, uh, um, and then sales returns, was he returned stuff? So that'll be sales returns, it's an equity minus plus. And then debtors control is a bad output. As we can see from this, he's returning him, so his debtors control is going to decrease. So that'll be the debtors allowance journal, which is that input. 
and then once again we need we will have to reverse the sale of trading inventory and cost of sales as well so it's asset plus minus equity minus plus okay so what do we do it's eight to five so your debtors control decreased with eight to five your sales um, sales returns it's an expense eight to five divided by one point one four is seven two three six eight that input is an asset plus minus and then the VAT amount is 101.32 101.32 so that then will go into the debtless control so let's quickly uh, let's quickly do that our debtless allowance journal sorry debtless allowance journal then we've got DA2, 13th, details, Le Montate, 825, 10132, 72368. And now we need to calculate the cost again. That's 72368, you just put that in the magic block. So 723.68 divided by 150, multiply by 100, and that gives you 482.45. Where's my pen? So in other words, oh sorry, four, yeah, four six. 482. Where am I now? Trading invent. Okay, your trading inventory. Remember that brought stuff back. So your trading inventory increased with four eight two four six. Your cost of sales then basically increased, if I can put it that way, four eight two four six. Because why? Because the the cost has to be brought back onto books because the stock has been returned. So that's once again that's just a reversal of what's happening in the debtors journal. So all those transactions you just need to reverse. Okay, so let's quickly uh, put this in. I've done this. So this will be four eight two four six. And just another thing I would like to mention is when you do your calculations on your calculator um, I know sometimes you round off, but in your calculator, try and keep the, the full number. So if it's 482.49 waka waka waka, when you do the rest, when you do the rest of the calculations um, there, just try and um, keep the whole number and don't use the rounded off number because sometimes then your answers won't be the same. So let your final answer, round off your final answer. You can round it off in the books. And just add up and see if everything balances um, like it should. But it's just a good um, practice, like in the, for this example, if you um, if you do round off and you use the rounded off numbers to do this transaction, you get 482.45. I know it's only a one cent difference, but if you don't use the rounded off of the the rounded off numbers, then it's 482.46. Okay. So I hope that helped. So let's just quickly highlight, highlight this here. And for it to that one, this will be that one. And then we've done that one. Okay, I think I'm going to stop right here at the moment. So we will continue a little bit later. Okay, I'm just going to do the, I'm just going to focus quickly onto our worksheet that you can see what we've done. Okay, let's just go there. Once again, debtors, journal, creditors, all that. Whoops, 
sorry, yeah, there's a cost of sales trading inventory. Runway dealers, okay, let's go down. Cash book payments. Here we go. Creditors journal. Creditors Allowance Journal. Debtors Journal. Debtors Allowance Journal. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I can't believe I got so confused with that last one there. Sorry about that. Whoa. Okay, and that's that. So thank you guys. I'll see you for the next lesson.